Hi, I'm Tamara Lackey, and on this episode of Redefine Show for Adorama TV, I speak with John Michael and Delisa Cooper of Alt F Photography about the evolution of their anti style and how trend setting their work has been. Check it out. Hi, John and Delisa, how are you? Hi, good. good how morning. are you doing? Thanks for coming here to Chapel Hill. Thank you for having us. So you came in from Las Vegas via a tour of the United States photographing families. Um, but I want to hear a little bit more about uh, the development of this very unique style behind Alt-F photography. I've always kind of like took the approach. I, when I got into wedding photography, because um, uh, I was doing portrait photography for a long time, or trying to be a successful portrait photographer, when I started doing wedding photography, I just like, what am I supposed to do? What am I supposed to shoot? How am I supposed to shoot it? So I like kind of went the way and like learned a lot of traditional stuff and posing. And um, back in the day, I even took a workshop with uh, like the likes of Monty Zucker and oh, yeah, yeah. Um, Stephen Rudd and all that. And um, back in the back a long time ago. And so I kind of like used that as my basis. And I was really good at doing doing what I thought was was the par mm -hmm. for the time. But I wasn't very successful. I was wasn't very happy. Um, because my personal stuff was a little lot more on the darker side. I was just trying to like, well, this is what wedding photography is supposed to be. This is what I'm supposed to shoot. So I just attacked it that way and very unsuccessful with it because I didn't have any, I didn't have the marketing in place. So I, even though I was, I thought I was as good as the, the market, um, I just didn't have, I just didn't have the marketing in place. And then I decided, um, I got kind of frustrated with how, how, I wasn't getting what I wanted to, wanted to shoot, mm -hmm. um, and then I just said, and I had some issues with some going back and forth to work with other studios, and realizing I had to break out. I got um, kind of hit a low point in in my. I failed a couple times, pretty hard, and I said, you know what, I'm just gonna do it my way. <laughs> and so what I would do is like, I'm gonna do just play around, and do stuff really dark. I'm just gonna show my dark stuff, yeah. and if it doesn't work. Goodbye. I showed up at a bridal show wearing a garbage man's shirt, and the happiest thing in my booth was a black and white image of a bride with her makeup streaming down her face. Although, although I, I, I only appealed to a small fraction of people, I booked all those people and I got really busy. So let's chat a little bit about how your technique evolved, because it's been really cool. So um, the technique I, that I, I think I'm becoming, I'm not known for, but what I've been doing Quite a bit lately is is, is kind of a composite technique, um, and mostly back since I was started shooting, I really fell in love with a, a painting of light technique. Mm -hmm. um, and then when I used to work in the dark room, I used to do a lot of compositing. Um, that was uh, Photoshop layers, but with enlargers, like five, six enlargers at a time. Yeah. Uh, so the old school stuff. Um, and then when I got into digital photography, I've always wanted to. I've always wanted to like have more of a light painted look mm -hmm. um, with in the middle of the day because painting with light you just got to shut all the lights off and that's not yeah. too easy to do in the daylight yeah and so basically but you're tired you want to have some dinner yeah right. so exactly. and I like um, I, I like I like things that in a regular photography career you learn and learn so much about making everything correct yeah um, the direction of light always goes one direction um, uh, you don't you don't want to see your fill light. You just want to see the, the effects of your key light. The fill light is supposed to be kind of invisible, um, and so everything kind of blends into a more natural scene. Where I kind of go the other way. I want it to look very unnatural. So I'll have two people standing right beside each other, almost face to face, and the light is has they have different directions on the face. So your mind looks at it, say something's wrong with this. Yeah. You don't know what it is. Your uh, your conscious mind may not say, but your unconscious like. Something's wrong with this, so you end up staring at it a little bit longer. Right. And also, why also, then lately I've been working with stereo mm -hmm. at work. Um, I actually hyper stereo stuff. And um, and you mean this from a visual perspective? A visual perspective. Yeah. So yes. it, ba it basically allows you to kind of mess with the viewer because they have two different audiences. I'm noticing a theme. <laughs> yeah. So, you know, my, my whole thing is, is, is to... Um, uh, um, Alt F with the, with with the minds, <laughs> other people's minds. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's my that's my that's my uh, censored version of it. Uh, since you have two audiences, one for the right eye, one for the left eye. If you change and make an anomaly for one eye, then your mind has to create something different. 
mm. and make either either delete something or, or make something new. Yeah. And so with my stereo work, although what I'm doing for the current project, I'm doing very simple stuff, uh, but eventually um, I'll be doing stuff from, uh, where, where the images for the right and left eye are, are, are radically different mm. uh, in a subtle way. Um, I don't want to like give everything away, but it's, uh, but that's, I, I like, I like to mess with the mind. I like to hide stuff in my images and I don't like things perfect. And my lighting technique for how I'm lighting and cause I photographed you yesterday, it's basically a composite and I work with the flashes and really, really close to the subject. So oh. I'm in the image. Right. And so when I composite them together, it becomes very much uh, more of a surreal look to it. Yeah. Um, and I can do it in any lighting situation. So I can take that and shoot bright sun, middle of the day, and make it look like twilight if I wanted to. Right. I can go into dark room and shoot it. So the, the technique and the look, I can do it in any lighting situation. Right. Light behind me, light in, fr in front of me. Um, Which gives you a lot of creative freedom. Well, yeah, well, and well, it gives me a lot of creative freedom, and but it also allows me to make all the light. Yeah. Um, so I'm in control of everything, um, and it, but it also allows me for this particular project to be have some sort of consistency. Yeah. Because my backgrounds and my lights aren't consistent. I'm sometimes shooting in in the in the evening where there's no light, and then sometimes I'm shooting. Um, noon. In the Our noon, light. the yeah. sun's right there. There's no, there's no open shade. There's no nothing. So it's like you have to, you have to fight with it all. Right, and then the um, the more kind of extreme work was a little more visceral and stuff. Um, will you share a little bit of that kind of? Oh, the my, my anti bridal stuff. Yeah. So that goes back. Which is like that's again that's what catches people's attention. I think I started doing anti-bridles, what I called anti-bridles, that was my breakout when I decided I'm going to do something different and if no one likes it, who cares? Yeah. Um, and so I just, at the time, um, back in the day, you couldn't take a bride across wet grass. <laughs> There's this glorious sunset, lightning strike, and, and clouds gathering in this most beautiful landscape over there if I just get you on this little hill. It's like, oh, there's wet grass right there. You just would not walk across it. And it's like, sorry. you miss all this glorious stuff. And then, and then I was like, you know what? Um, I end up, uh, I wanted something dark. I just want to take the bride out of context. And the yeah. easiest way to do that is a bridal session. Right. After, after like, the wedding. Like, get some time to. And my most, the, big, the one that actually changed everything, this is like a, I shot in 2000, there's a fire that burned up a, a bunch of mesquite woods. Yeah. Um, and the, uh, and I had called, and it was like very dark Tim Burton-esque forest. I was like, this is a cool look. Yeah. Um, really dark black charred wood in the ground. If I put a bride in a, in a white dress, and this is actually the bride with the, the makeup going on face. Yeah. Um, it'll be awesome. What? <clears throat> and so I called up three or four brides that I just shot. Yeah. Their wedding's over. Their dress is probably hanging in a box somewhere. Said, I have this really cool idea. I really want to do a bridal session. It'll be really cool. And they said, oh, that's really cool. I want to do it. And then I explained, you'll be sitting in black ash. They said, no. Gotta go. Yeah. They turned me down. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, uh, I have I, a thing. <laughs> I skipped a car payment. I bought my own dress. I had a, um, a friend, knows a friend, that got a dress and model for me. And I shot it, showed the pictures off, and that picture is sort of like the picture. That's that was picture. that yeah. was that was the picture. And then the some of the brides that saw it said, "Oh, I would have done that." It's like, but everyone that saw that all of a sudden that gave me that gave me the passport to do anything else. Right. And so before it's a heck of a lesson in there. Yeah, and like I can, if it's in you, yeah, create it. Yeah, and the people that came to me saw the work I was showing off. I actually wrote an article called. Um, show off, aka trash address. Yeah. Um, so I coined that phrase. Sorry. Yep. Um, sorry. <laughs> and then it was everywhere. Yeah. So um, and but I always did these anti bridals, but people came to me for that kind of work. So when a bride came to me and saw I like that work, when after that, for that one moment, because I showed that stuff off before, on the wedding day, if I said, hey, I want you to lay down in this wet grass, they would lay down that yeah. way. Oh, anything. It's like I am I was so like, full of oh. power. <laughs> <laughs> it was just a revelation. It's yeah, like yeah. I just end up I end up end up accidentally marking to the people that were visually in line with what I wanted to do. Yeah. And it was wasn't out and then all of a sudden the wedding photography was not hard work. Right. And it was fun and I enjoyed it and 
although I got really, really busy, and that's where Lacey comes in, and I sort of like stopped answering my calls because I was like overloaded. <laughs> and it's like, um, yeah, so that's where kind of Delisa rescued me and, and, and saved my business. But um, let the that, artist that's, be the artist. that's yeah. part of her story, so. <clears throat> All right, so let's talk about Roadside Families. Thank you for swapping since yes. you are more the coordinator and manager and visionary of how this is happening, or right? Or trying to be, right. trying to be. It's a lot to handle, but we're, we're keeping it under control somewhat. Somewhat. <laughs> so you, well, real quick, just to back up a little bit, when you guys met, yes. you were shooting, mm -hmm. and you were in on the business side yes. of photography. Always have been, always editorial. will be. Editorial, right. Yeah. And um, <laughs> tell us a little bit the story you told me about um, how, when you met, he's like, but I'm all good for business. Yes, yes, <laughs> uh, terribly failing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Great artist, as I said, I, 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 I fell in love with his work. I was like, this guy's so talented, but he cannot answer a phone call or an email, or he, uh, okay. brides are calling saying, okay. I wanna just book this guy, and he, I call him like, what's going on, John? And he's like, well, that's like a year away from now. I can, I, I'm working on stuff right now. I have a wedding to edit. I'm, I'm like, all right, well. I was well. trying to get stuff out the door. I was <laughs> exactly. struggling. Yeah. It, it makes it, it, it made it super easy for me to swoop in and just say, let me handle yeah. some of the stuff you don't like to handle. Right. And vice versa. He's the creative side. And um, I love taking photographs. He's actually taught me everything I know about photography. But my heart's in the business. I, I like the people. I like the customer service. I like that aspect of it. Yeah. And you're very good at it. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So how did the, the origin... The origin story, yeah, the origin story <laughs> of Roadside Families. So Roadside Families was, was inspired by a talk that David Williams gave at a conference a couple years ago. Hi, David. Um, hi, David Williams. <laughs> we love him. Hi, David. Um, he touched our heart with the story that he told us about his family and his father um, being a photographer for the family, taking photographs, beautiful black and whites, beautiful color photographs of him and his, his sister growing up, beautiful photos of his mother, um, just really, really inspiring stuff. And he went through this whole thing at the very end. I'm gonna try not to get emotional, but he didn't have photos of all of them together. So this is where I always get caught up. It gets me every time and it's been like, I don't know, nine years. Yeah. So um, we were actually going on a tour that year. We were teaching workshops and we were going on the road and we had 32 days to hit. It was something like 17 cities. And along the way we thought, why not? stop and photograph some of these photographers that are not getting into the photos with their, their families. Yeah. And um, that year, along the road, this is how it got its name, we were driving from city to city and people were calling us like, hey, how can we find you? And we're like, we're on this highway between this time and this time. Great. And we were meeting people at schools, uh, parking lots, truck, truck stops, stops. Um, random like side roads. And so Roadside Families was developed from that. Ah, yeah. And that year we shot 37 families. That was 2008. We don't want the image to be timeless. We want it to be dated very quickly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, be so you, when you look at it, it's like uh, um, I photograph your family in front of your house. Right. Um, we, if you look at someone's old photos, um, go through their, like, their grandparents or their uncle's photos, you, mm -hmm. you have a picture of them. It's usually a picture of them in front of their house or in front of their car, and that kind of dates it. Oh, that's that time frame. Yeah. Oh, I remember that house. That's the house I grew up in. That was the Mustang. Mm -hmm. yeah, right. that, yeah, exactly. I, um, actually, I have a picture in front of my dad's Mustang when yeah. I was a little boy when I was um, uh, uh, living in Japan in 1967 or 68. Yeah. Um, and so I remember that, and you know exactly where you are in the time right. frame and the time period. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and like I said, you want it, you want it to be, you want it, to show the time frame exactly where you are, because right. that slice of life. I mean, I mean, for regular portraiture, we we make it timeless. But I think family portraits should um uh, should date very very quickly. All right. So from here on out, where can people find out more about roadside families and you guys, and and what kind of timeline might they have to still get in on this round? or maybe your next one. Okay, very good. Um, so roadsidefamilies.org is our website. We're also, it's also a blog site, so we're adding all of the photos that we're taking as we're receiving them back from Lavalu from the edits. Uh, so you can see a lot of the, the current work there. Uh, the, most, the most current, as far as our travels, is going to be on our Instagram, roadside, at Roadside Families on Instagram. Okay. And um, we are just, a lot of it's just fun stuff behind the scenes, right, kind right. of playing around. But I am also posting photos of, of the completed product. All right. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. Thank you. Thanks okay. for having us. And it was such a blast photographing you and your family. Thank you. <laughs>